so what we were discussing is about the physical features and we have seen the various points regarding the physical features already and we have also discussed the climatical region or eco region of australia and uh, what is remaining is the sub regions of australia under the sub regions of australia we have four sub regions in australia first one is austro malayan sub region if you take the austro austro malayan means it consists of australia plus certain regions of malaysian or malayan archipelago archipelago means group of islands so malaysia is a large area with many islands there is a malaysian archipelago so coming to the malay austro malayan sub region we have malayan archipelago i will show you the malayan archipelago here so this is the australian region there are several islands in the australia and these islands are all part of malay austro malayan sub region one is the new guinea then malay malayan archipelago is the then solomon islands are there that means most of these regions are outside the australian continent this is the australian continent for more than സമയത്തൊക്കെ വരണം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അടച്ചു കുട്ടികളെ ഇത്രയും പേരുണ്ടായിരുന്ന പുറത്ത് സീങ് ദ ഓസ്ട്രേലിയൻ സബ് റീജിയൻ ദർ the uh, most of these regions are islands on the solomon island new guinea then malay malaysian uh, archipelago here you can see that there the solomon islands are all here in this map also you can find these are the solomon islands new guinea and some islands in the malaysian region are also part of the first sub region now the second sub region is a australian sub region it mainly consists of australia plus tasmania earlier i discussed about an island this small island on the southern part of australia is known by the name tasmania that is tasmania so so this uh, this is a second sub region known by the name australian sub region now coming to the third sub region we have polynesian sub region that consists of polynesia plus sandwich islands here i will show you that. this is the polynesian sub region so this is the australia here there is a large area of ocean and that large area of ocean is actually now divided into three sub three regions one is known as the polynesian sub region and second one is the melanesian sub region under the melanesian sub region you have solomon islands then vanuatu fiji etc then we have marshall islands and uh, uh, kiribati these are all coming under the micronesian sub region then we have polynesian sub region under the polynesian sub region several islands are coming small islands are the this is a hawaii hawaii is a very famous island coming part of the so if you take hawaii hawaii is an island and hawaii is under the control of united states it is a 50th state of united states now there are many may several other smaller islands like samoa tonga cook island 
then Marcus Island. These are all part of Polynesia. So that is, this is Australia and these Polynesian islands may be 1000 km or 2000 km away from the Australian mainland. So right now this Oceania, this, all these ocean, oceanic islands are uh, convert, uh, changed into, transferred into another region called Oceania Rella. Oceania Rella or Oceania region. But, uh, but according to your classification, they are still placed in the Australian in the realm. So that is the Pol Polynesian subregion. Then comes the fourth subregion. The fourth subregion is known by the name New Zealand subregion. That is, you can clearly see in New Zealand, uh, this is the New Zealand subregion. Now, if you take the New Zealand subregion, this New Zealand is actually formed of two main islands. One is a North Island, other is a South Island. So there are two major islands in New Zealand, North Island and South Island. So this is the, this is the idea regarding the different sub-regions of Australia. Now what is remaining now is, is regarding the fauna of Australia. Coming to the fauna of the Australia, we have different types of animals in Australia. We have freshwater fishes. Amphibians are there, reptiles are there. But if you take the some sarical audience, but if you take the details of this freshwater fish, amphibians and reptiles, all these animals are very poorly represented in Australia. There is a freshwater fish. Why freshwater fish and amphibians are very poorly represented? The reason is that in order to reach Australia, they will have to cross ocean. So most of the evolution of amphibians as well as freshwater fishes have taken place in other parts of the world. And Australia is far separated from most of the other continents. That is one reason why Australia, uh, in the case of Australia, the freshwater fishes and other amphibians are very poorly represented. So that is one peculiarity of the Australia. Another peculiarity that we are finding is the absence of higher placental mammals. You know, by, by higher placental mammals, I mean, uh, like uh, human beings, like uh, all the mammals that we are seeing in, in, in our area are placental mammals. Because uh, they have a placenta and mammals possessing placenta are known as a placental mammal. And they are more evolutionarily more advanced. Biologically, they are better adapted to survive. So that is a peculiarity of the placental mammals. And in the case of Australia, Australia being separate from other areas of the world for a long time, placental mammals were unable to reach Australia. So that is that is why placental mammals are still absent. But after the colonization of Australia by Europeans, they introduced many mammals like rabbit, then dog and cat. And all these animals are slowly competing with the marsupial mammals of Australia and they are now facing some extinction risk also. So that is another peculiarity. Absence of higher placental mammals is a, is a feature of Australian fauna. Then the Australian island is sometimes known as island of relics. Relic means uh, the remains of, or uh, there is a meaning for the word old remains. Or archaic. Archaic means very primitive, very old. So there is two terms why Australia is considered as an island of relics or archaic animals. Now if you take Australia, Australia mainly consists of marsupial animals and there are some egg-laying mammals also. So both of these egg-laying mammals and marsupial mammals are evolutionarily more primitive. And so, Australian continent is mainly consists of these egg-laying mammals and marsupial mammals. That is the reason why Australia is considered an island of relics. Relics simply mean old remains or archaic. Archaic means primitive or also older. Then, basically, we are finding two types of uh, mammals in Australia. One is egg-laying mammal. We have studied about egg-laying mammal, like platypus and also echidna. Then we have marsupial mammals. Several species of marsupial mammals are there. 
the famous uh, red kangaroo is uh, this is one of the best example the koala is another example you have studied so this is a broad idea regarding the nature of fauna in australia now coming to the fish fauna in the east of australia these are some of the major fishes that we are we are now uh, we can now encounter in australia then one is the australian lungfish the name of the australian lungfish is neoceratodus this is the australian lungfish it's a very large fish the peculiarity of the australian lungfish is that they possess a lung that means they are able to breathe atmospheric air that is why they are known as lungfish very few fishes are having lungs the importance of lungfish is that lungfish is an important stage in the evolution of amphibian it is from the it is by the modification or evolution re change that took place uh, in a in a type of lungfish the modern amphibians have evolved so amphibian the lungfish is a stage in the evolution of the amphibian that is the importance of lungfish so as in australia we are finding a type of lungfish known as neoceratodus then we have different types of fishes are the scoliodont scoliodont simply means the shark scoliodont is the shark the north uh, common type of shark that we are fi uh, finding in our area is also scoliodont then mackerel mackerel is the uh, is also present here you know sardine and mackerel that ida that is a mackerel then cyanoglossus here you can find this these are all cyanoglossus then another uh, fish is katla katla this is the this fish is known as a katla and this is the shark or scoliodont then anabas anabas man malayalam we call karup then sacrobranchus this is a sacrobranchus you may have seen a big sacrobranchus so these are the some of the fish uh, that we are finding in australia then the next type of animals that we are seeing in australia are the amphibians now in the case of amphibians also very few species of amphibians are there and most of them are frogs like rana species rana species are there then uh, rana is the type is a common type of frog that we are finding here then hyla is there hyla are basically tree frogs most of the hylas are tree frogs then uh, this is the rana type of frog that we normally coming under the genus rana very common in our areas also the same genus is also present in australia then this is the tree frog hyla hyla frogs are commonly uh, green in color most of the time and they have a longer legs so that they can easily jump from one branch of the tree to another branch of the tree so that is the peculiarity of the hyla then uh, we have leptodactylids that is also another type of frog then uh, 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 these are the three different types of amphibians but uh, in compared to other groups of amphibians for example if you take amphibian fauna in kerala or in india we have urodila you might have heard about salamander salamander means they are tailed amphibians and they are categorized under the class uh, under the group urodila and similarly you have also studied about uriotiflus gigenophis and they are not known as sicilians and uh, limbless amphibians so that is another group that we can find in india uh, so in the case of australia we are only finding the only one group of am amphibian that is enura that is they are these the frog like amphibians which do not have a tail they are all categorized under the group enura so only limited number of amphibians are present in australia the reason is that in order to reach australia they need fresh water so in the ocean there won't be any fresh water so amphibians are not able to reach australia because of land connection with the australia for a long time australia is still separated from other continents other areas of the other regions of uh, the world by an ocean 
So you know because it's that, it is because of the inability to cross the ocean that amphibians fauna or amphibians are poorly represented in our, in, in the use of Australia. Now the next is the use of uh, the reptiles. Here you can find the major reptiles that we can find in Australian region. Now if you go to the New Zealand, we cannot find any snakes. Why snakes are absent in New Zealand? If you look at the map of Australia, you can see that this is the Australia and this is the New Zealand. The ocean that is separating this Australia and New Zealand may be some 1000 or more kilometer away, uh, kilometer wide. So that is why in order to reach, uh, reach, uh, reach New Zealand, the reptilian snakes has to close this ocean. For them to cross an ocean of 1000 kilometers may not be very easy. That is why in the use of New Zealand we are not finding any snakes. So if you are afraid of snakes you can safely live in New Zealand. There are no poisonous animals in New Zealand. So that is one, uh, one peculiarity of the uh, reptilians. So in the use of New Zealand we are not finding any snakes. That tour, Spinodon is only seen in this region. Spinodon, I will show you Spinodon. Uh, somewhere near the Spinodon. This is the Spinodon. The Spinodon is a type of reptile that is present only in the use of New Zealand. Then uh, there are some other type of reptiles are also there. Then Now under the reptilians we have different types of reptiles are the crocodiles are the in Australia the crocodiles are very dangerous I may we have seen in videos or your media television about the crocodiles of Australia then gecko gecko you know pali that is a meaning of jet then turtles are freshwater tortoises then agamids agamids are also reptiles then python, here you can see that uh, large pythons are there. So these are some of the reptilian animals. But in Australia, compared with the, uh, with the amphibian, reptilian population is well represented. Reptilian species are well represented. Because Australia generally has a drier climate. So that uh, reptiles can easily survive. Many parts of Australia are desert. So, Many snakes like python, uh, then uh, coral snakes, here you can see that these are all somewhere near coral snakes, uh, they are all very colorful snakes. Then, uh, then uh, uh, scale footed lizard like pygopus, then another is komodo dragon, this is the komodo dragon. Uh, it is a very large reptile, almost the size of a crocodile and they are dangerous also. And that most of this uh, Komodo dragon are now present in an Indonesian island or New Guinea island. And there is a Komodo national park also there where they are protected. And they are meat eating animals, carnivorous animals. So if you if, if you come across them, they may easily kill human beings. So that's why they are well protected. Human beings are not allowed in those, those sanctuaries. Then uh, another is the Spinodon punctatus. This is the Spinodon. Then, um, so this is regarding the reptilian population. Then comes the avian and avian or birds of Australia. Under the bird population, these are the major birds that we can find in Australia. One is Apteryx, popularly known by the name TV. And it is present only in the of New Zealand. Here I will show you maybe a picture of kiwi maybe here. So, uh, the kiwi you might have then Dromius. This is the emu. This is the emu. If you have not seen emu, there are many, many uh, parts of Kottayam. And now we can find emu. They are rearing emu here. Then uh, Cassowaries. This is the Cassowary. So these are some of the uh, tailed, uh, some of the birds that we are finding in Australia. Kiwi is a flightless bird and emu is also flightless because uh, 
means uh, the flight adaptation basically developed in birds is a is an adaptation for escaping from enemies in the case of australia they are these birds are not experiencing or facing any enemies like large mammals like a lion the leopard tiger or such kind of predators are absent in australia so birds are all well protected they are safe they don't need to fly to escape that is why flight adaptation uh, become the poorly represent the flight adaptation or the process, the nature of flying gradually disappeared in this in these birds now there are number of these flightless birds are common in this region now, in addition to flightless birds we can also see many other birds like pigeon the common uh, uh, then duck is the cranes are the crow sparrows are the then tooth billed pigeon tooth billed pigeon is another uh, famous bird there uh, so these are some of the important birds that we can uh, and, uh, this is the lyre bird lyre bird this bird is known as then birds of paradise are the then under the category of mammals we have nine families of marsupials in uh, in the zoo of australia then uh, uh, 52 genera of six families and are 50 there are 52 genera under six families of marsupials are there and uh, they are not found uh, in neo neotropical region in south american region because presently the marsupial population are present in australia as well as in south america so uh, but only uh, in, uh, in australia we can find a majority of the amphibians a majority of the marsupials then another peculiarity of the marsupial fauna is that they have a parallel parallelism that is earlier i showed you about if you take koala koala and bear bear are somewhat similar similarly if you take a dog earlier i showed you a picture of tasmanian devil or tasmanian wolf this tasmanian wolf and the common dog that we are finding here they are similar that is so there is some just like the different cats dogs and rabbits are here in the east of australia also we can find animals similar to cats dogs or rabbits or fox etc etc that kind of parallel evolution is known by the name parallelism then the, now these are some of the peculiarities that now coming to the fauna of mammalian fauna we have platypus is there there that is duck billed platypus this is a duck because of its similarity with the beak of a duck or bill of a duck they are known as a duck billed platypus it is an egg-laying mammal there are only two types of egg-laying mammal one is the echidna and other is the platypus then uh, this here you can find echidna importance of echidna is that their hairs are all modified into uh, spines and because of the presence of spine they are well protected and they have a beak very long pointed beak using that beak they were able to capture or feed on ants or small insects so this is the this are two important type of uh, now regarding platypus also in the use of male platypus they have a poison gland there are very few mammals which are possessing a poison and male platypus is one example then uh, second one is the uh, macropus or kangaroos uh, regarding the uh, macropus or kangaroos nammal kangaroo nanu parayadengil it is a right name is kangaroo you have to start pronouncing that otherwise what will happen is if you ever go to other countries and start pronouncing kangaroo they will laugh at you that is a problem so always pronounce the right name because now we are living in a global world earlier when i was a student we were all very comfortable we need to bother only about kerala now your case is not that you are going to different parts of the world right now maybe after this year nobody knows in which country you will be living so so many students our after 5 years nobody know whether you are you be living in europe or you will be living in gulf country or in canada or in other parts of the world you have to go because that is the case so now we are living as a global citizen 
and we have to um, think about them uh, how other people are pronounced. So one problem is that you have people generally facing that after this many of them will be going to IELTS. So if your pronunciation and English skills are not good, then you will be facing trouble. Earlier I used to teach most of my classes in Malayalam. Now why I am teaching in English is that if you listen to English, then you will be gradually improving your English skills also. So that will be beneficial for you after some time. So if you go to Australia, so this is a case. This is the Tasmanian devil or Tasmanian wolf. They are similar to the common dog. Then another case is the Dacius, tiger cat. Here you can find a tiger cat. Then um, uh, Teropus is there. Teropus is a, a flying fox. Flying fox. Uh, now I don't know whether. Uh, see uh, here, this is a tiger cat. Then there is a uh, flying fox. Is there? This flying fox or sugar glider. They are all similar. Then paramoles. Paramoles are. Marsupial bandicoot. Bandicoot means the Malayalam in you know, that is the bandicoot. So, similar to the bandicoot, we have Australian marsupial representatives. These are the uh, rat like uh, the bandicoot or the rat, Australian rat like marsupial. So, this is another case that is just like the different types of placental mammals, we are finding similar type of marsupial mammals also. So here, this is koala is like a bear. This is the mole. This is the flying phalanger. This is the Tasmanian wolf or wolf or dog like mammal. This is a tiger cat or similar to the modern cat. Then this is the ant eater. This is also this. All these animals that you are finding in the picture are marsupial mammals, not placental mammals. But they look like many of them look like a placental mammals. Then marsupial rat. Then we have kangaroos are the. This animal is now extinct. Only very few photos of that animal is the. Then equus equus. Uh, uh, in the present time, the more human beings have introduced many animals. Like donkeys are introduced into Australia. Pigs are introduced into Australia. Then rabbits are introduced into Australia. Camels are introduced. All these are introduced by. Europeans. Now, because of their presence, the Australian native population of Australia, native mammals of Australia are facing a lot of risk also. Then, next one here, there is a comparison between the placental mammals and their marsupial mammals. This is a squirrel. And similar to the squirrel, we have flying phalanger in, uh, in Australia. Then uh, there is, there is a, a mammal called groundhog and similar to groundhog we have wombat. Wombat is a marsupial animal. Then anteaters are present in placental category and in the use of marsupial we have marsupial anteater. Moles are present. Similar to that mole, marsupial moles are also present. Then similar to the common mouse we have marsupial mouse. So with that it, there is a parallel evolution between placental mammals and marsupial mammals. In how many directions this common placental mammals have evolved? Almost in the same direction, marsupial mammals have also evolved. So that is an interesting thing about the nature of evolution. So these are the various types of mammals that we are, uh, we are encountering in Australia. So, most important feature of Australian mammals is the, the primitive nature and this parallel evolution. So, uh, remember this picture always, just like the modern, uh, different types of modern uh, placental mammals are the, we can find similar type of placental, uh, we can similar type of marsupial mammals in Australian continent also. So that's uh, that's come to the end of this uh, fauna of Australia. So under the fauna of Australia, sometimes you may get a question, uh, give an account of the fauna of Australian realm. 
then you have to explain only the animals present in Australia. Sometimes they will put a, a complete essay, give and uh, write an essay on the uh, faunistic features, physical features and sub-regions of Australia. Then you have to explain all the three categories. Now you can write down some questions. 